be evident in our lives. And that between now and the next conference, there will be an emergence of the new us to the world in Jesus name. So let's begin to pray. Let's pray that the Lord will bring the invocation of the word of God and cause us to emerge in Jesus name. Let's begin to pray today that Lord, please bring the invocation of your, the word of God and cause the real us to emerge in Jesus name. Let's begin to pray. Let me hear you pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray God today that you will bring an invocation of your word in the name of Jesus. Men all around us will know it for good. Our husbands will know it for good. The children will know it for good. All those living around us will know it for good. In our places of work, they will know that the new us has emerged in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. In the book of 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 12, we will see there that in the book of 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 12, the Lord said, Our eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. So this is a new dimension in our life. The Lord will prepare us for something new today in the name of Jesus. As we listen to the word of God today, we shall experience him in a new way. His light will come upon us in a new way that people all around us will see that of a truth, the Lord is with us. Of a truth, his light is upon us. Let's begin to pray in the name of Jesus. The purpose of God concerning every woman in TSF, concerning everyone present in this meeting today, shall be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray that, Lord, your purpose shall be fulfilled in my life, in my family, in my career, in my business, in everything I lay my hands upon to do. It shall prosper in the name of Jesus. None of us will die small. None of us will die small. None of us will die with our, with our, our destined dreams in the name of Jesus. Not our light will shine and darkness will not be able to comprehend it. In the name of Jesus, let us pray that the good things that I will be, the Lord, let them begin to open up in the name of Jesus. The good things, the, mention your name, the good things that high for the lack of Peter Jakaye will be. Lord, begin to open it up in the name of Jesus. Turn it to prayer at this month, this evening. In the name of that business idea, that next decision, that partnership, Lord, begin to open it up in the name of Jesus. Lord, Malerebo Sondorbo. Let's begin to pray that Lord, every let my potentials begin to find expression in the name of Jesus. Every of my potentials, my capabilities, let them begin to find potential in the name of Jesus. Turn it into prayer today in the name of Jesus. Let every of my potentials, every of my possibilities, let them begin to turn in the name of Jesus. Still using the book of First Corinthians 2, 9 to 12. We, we, there we would also see that how does light come? Light could come in form of the word or come in, in, in form of his spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks to us at all times, but are we always willing to hear him? He speaks to us, he directs us, he guides us. Are we willing to hear him? Let's begin to pray that, Lord, anytime you speak, I will hear you. When you, when I would see you, when you make things clear to me, in my decision making, I will not be biased. In every step of the way, Lord, I would listen to your instructions in the name of Jesus. Lord, let's begin to pray that the Lord will help us to identify his communication, that we will not hear what the devil is saying to us. We will listen to him and we will be able to identify when he's speaking to us. And we'll also be able to interpret it. We'll be able to interpret it well. Let's begin to pray, Lord. Anytime you speak to me, I'll be able to understand your divine communication and be able to interpret it well, to make decisions that will take me to the next level, to make decisions that will take me to the next height. Let's begin to pray concerning our family, decisions concerning the family, Decision concerning your business, decision concerning your finances, concerning your relationship, concerning everything that pertains to us. That Lord, please, we shall begin to make decisions 
that are guided by your will in the name of Jesus. Let's commit the program into your hands. Let's commit those that those that we pray, Mommy Babalola and others, that the Holy Spirit will speak through them. Lives will be transformed today in the name of Jesus. We will hear you clearly. We will hear that voice clearly. And when it's time to make decisions, Lord, we will not miss it. We will not make decisions and miss in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to thank God for answered prayers. Let's thank God because the remaining program will be successful. Everything will go well as planned in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everything. For in Jesus' name we've prayed. Praise the Lord. Father, we bless your name for today. We give you praise, O Lord, for how you did yes, with us yesterday. We thank you for using our sister, Dr. Olola, it's our mental and emotional. Stress. We bless your name because you will yet use our mighty label today in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise and honor for the theme of this of this year, the VOP conference. Father, we say be thou exalted in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. You will do great and mighty things in our lives, that our lives shall be transformed, and we shall all be thoroughly blessed in Jesus' name. We pray. But I submit myself unto you. I'm asking that you take me over. Grant me utterance, O Lord. Let the words that will come from my mouth to impact my listeners and let there be transformation of lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, this year's theme is Be Delight. I'm so excited because after this conference, <laughs> In the next two years, when another comes, a thousand times better than we are now, in Jesus' name. Amen. This, our text is taken from Matthew 5, 14 to 16, and Isaiah 60, verse 1. And even the one that took the prayer, including our mommy yesterday, that's with it. I've gone through the scriptures, through the text. And right now, because of the time, we are going to go straight into introduction. Yes, I'm not a science student and I have not come to teach physics or to talk about physics as regards light. But when we say light, the visible light is the natural agent, it's the electromag electromagnetic agent, radiation that stimulates sight and makes things visible. It is also understanding a problem or mystery. Like yesterday, our sister, Dr. Lalade, took us gave us light, some light into how to cope with stress, with our emotional stress and with our mental stress. We had light concerning that area yesterday. That is light. But in the above context, light is one of the most universal and fundamental symbols. It is spiritual and divine. It is illumination and intelligence. It is the source of goodness and ultimate reality. That is all about the introduction. Now, very quickly, we are going to go into the definition of light. According to our text, according to our text, light is defined as life. According to First John, according to John 1, 4 to 5, in him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. In other words, darkness could not put it out, cannot overcome light. So darkness is pres present in the absence of light. In the absence of eternal life, therefore, darkness refers to death spiritually. Because in this text, we discover that light is life. Light is light. And in Jesus, if you, if you share kids from me, John chapter 1, verse 1, because the Bible says in him, that's in verse 4, from verses 1 to 4, we'll be able to, 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 to understand who he's talking about. The Bible says in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word was God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. 
and through him all things were made. Nothing was made that was not made through this word. So we are talking about the word of God through which everything. And so, and the end in verse 4, he said, in him was life. And that life, that life in God, the life of God is light. And that light shines in darkness, and darkness could not, could not put it out. So we are going to begin to, if life is light, and light is life, if life is light, then darkness is death. Darkness is death. Therefore, darkness refers to death, have eternal life, because they are unknown to God. Darkness represents everything that is anti-God, the wicked. It is the emblem of sin, distress, trouble, perplexity, and sorrow. No wonder in 1 John 3, the Bible, Jesus said, for the, the Bible says that for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the work of darkness. So we are beginning to examine the source of light because our test is be the light. We have to be the light, be the light. Be the light, that's our tip. And our text says we are the light of the world. A city set upon the hill that cannot be. So let's quickly examine the source of light. And note that my stance. I said source of light, not sources of light. In other words, we have one source of light. It can be in three dimensions, but it is still one source. In James 1 17, we discover that God is the father of lights. And when we say father, it means source. Father means source. In John 1, 17, let me, let us uh, read it completely. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes, is from above. And it comes, comes from the Father of lights. In whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of Tony. So God is the source of light. He's the Father of light, the source. And first John 1, 5. The Bible says God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. <laughs> I have come to introduce the source of light to you this evening. He is the light. God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. Not only that, God dwells in unapproachable light. <laughs> in unapproachable light that no man has seen or can see. Even when Moses told God, show me your glory. God said, I will cover you with my palm. I will hide you in the cleft of the rock. And then I will, I will cover you with my palm. Then I will make my glory to pass. And you will see my back, but my face you cannot see. And praise the Lord. But we thank God because now we can see God. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus told us, if you have seen him, we have seen his father. So God is light and God dwells in unapproachable light. Secondly, in John chapter 1, verses 7 to 9, John the Baptist bore witness that Jesus is the true light, which gives light to every man that comes, every man coming into the world. And Jesus himself introduced himself in John 8, 12. I am the light. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Praise the Lord, somebody. So we have examined God as the light, Jesus as the light. And don't forget, I said source of light. Because Jesus and his father are one. So he says, the book of John 10, 30, I and my father are one. And then number three, thank God for the, my daughter that led the prayer. Talking about the word of God as light. You know, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, God declared, let and God said, Let there be light, and there was light, meaning that light was in the world, and the world was light. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! There is light, it was the word of God that brought light into existence to lighten the chaotic world at that time. 
God, the first creation of God was light. I want you to begin to follow me because something is going to happen in our lives. This is not just, this is an unusual conference. Amen. This is an unusual conference and there shall be unusual Amen. miracles in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Amen. word of God is light. The word brought light. So there is light in the word. And in that Psalm 119 verse 130, 130, the entrance of your word brings light, gives light, and it gives understanding to the simple. So the word of God is light. So these are the source of light. I can't say sources of light, or if you permit me for the sake of grammar, sources of light. But we know that God and his word and the, his son, Jesus Christ, an actual fact, Jesus Christ was the son, was the word of God. He was the word of God in heaven. Through him, all things were created. In the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, the Bible says there are three that bear record or witness in heaven. The father, the son, and the word. And these three are one. So no wonder it says source of life. And I didn't say sources of light. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Before God created the world, the, 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 the created light in verse 3 of Genesis chapter 1, the world was, the, 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 in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the, and the earth was without shape, without form, and void. It was empty. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering, thinking about what to do to this world. That is it. Let there be light. So God spoke. No wonder in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 3 it said, by faith, we understand. I beseech you, my fellow women and all the men that are listening to me, frame your world with your words. Frame your mm. world with your words. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, haven't, because we really have to do this to lay the foundation. Because if, they are, if we know the source of light, and we want to be the light. We have to get connected to the source. <laughs> when you build your house and you do the wiring, you have to get connected from the pole outside of the electric company. They used to call them NEPA and then power holdings. Now they, they have so many of them, you can get electric. You have to get connected to them so that you can have light. That is not yet enough. You have to have a meter. You have to have a switch over. And if you have a switch over and you, you, you are this, like the light enters into your house, you have, to, you have to make the switch so that you can switch on. So I'm talking about to us this, uh, this evening about how to get connected to this source of light. Praise the Lord. We can get connected to the light through our prayer. When you pray, you commune with God. You interact with God. We have fellowship with God. Don't forget the, 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 the story of Moses. Moses was, in the, in the, uh, was on the mountain praying. And by the time he left, <laughs> he left the mountain. The children of Israel could not behold his face because of the glory. The light of God has rubbed upon him. That's how to get connected to the light. Praise the Lord. By prayer, in the book of Luke chapter 9, verse 29, on the mountain of transfiguration, Jesus was praying and he was praying. <laughs> His countenance changed. His countenance changed. There was illumination. His whole body was illuminated. And he was glowing with a radiant glory. His brightness became so intense that made his clothing blinding. <laughs> Praise the Lord, somebody. So in the place of prayer, you get connected to the light. You get connected to the light in the place of prayer. 
Mm. And in the place, in the place of the word, the Bible says in Colossians 3, 16, we have examined the word of God as one of the source, as the source of light. So for you to be the light, you, you have, for you to be the light, you have to, the Bible says in that same verse, Colossians 3, 16, let the word of God in you reach your shut away flesh. You have to study the word. You have to read the word. You have to eat the word. You have to meditate upon the word until the flesh becomes the word. Until you become the word. That is the second thing you need to do. In addition to prayer, when you want to get connected. And in the place of praise. The Bible made us to understand that when we begin to praise God and worship God, the, the, the God inhabits our praises, meaning that he comes down into our praises. And when God comes down, he's anointing rub upon us. That's how to get connected to the light. Praise the Lord. So to be the light, or to give the light, you have to get connected to the, to the light through these three, uh, three, 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 three avenues. Through these avenues. You have to get connected and stay connected because in John 15, verses 4 to 5, Jesus said, You should have, we should, uh, instead, it is divine, and we are the branches, and we need to abide in Him and He in us to be a more truth. But without Him, we can do nothing. There is no light we can reflect if you don't abide in the source of light. May we all get connected and stay connected to the light so that we can be able to radiate the light of God, so that we can be able to shine forth his light in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, now we are going to, uh, God is light, God is light. So the nature of God is light. <laughs> the light of God is his holiness, his righteousness, and his goodness. Light is the nature and character of God. Just as God is love in 1 John 4, 8, so also God is light. Therefore, we need to be conscious of the reality of who we are. We say the nature of God. God, the light of God is his holiness, his righteousness, and his goodness. I want you to begin to follow me closely. The light of God is his holiness, his righteousness, and goodness. So if we have to be the light, in fact, as God, as, as Jesus told us, categorical statement was a categorical statement. You are the light of God. In the same day, God told us in First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So we too must be holy in order to reflect the holiness of God. Praise the Lord. We need to be holy. And secondly, we say the light of God is his righteousness. Don't forget in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he, God, made him, Jesus, to be a sin for us. He who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God in him. And Proverbs 4, 18, he said the path of the just, or the path of the righteous, is as a shining sun. Or as a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. Then we are talking about the goodness. That is the second nature of God now. Because the light of God is His holiness, His righteousness, and goodness. In Ephesians 2.10, the Bible says we are created for good works. We are created unto good works. And even in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 and 18, he said, command those who are rich in this world not to be haughty, not that one not to be proud, nor trust in certain riches, but in the in the in the, in the, in, the, in, the, in the Lord who gives us all things liberally to enjoy. Here the verse 18 of First Timothy chapter 6. He said, Let them do good. They are talking about the goodness of God. To reflect the light of God, you must be a good person. Willing to affect the lives of others. Let them do good and be rich in good works, ready to give and willing to share. 
willing to share the knowledge you have. That is you shining your light. Just like Dr. Olorade shared his own knowledge. Our own knowledge with us yesterday is shining. It's affecting our lives. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. So therefore, our lives should reflect his holiness, his righteousness, and goodness into a world darkened by sin. We must avoid lust. And we must have honorable conduct. We must be ready to witness to the unsaved. Open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from Satan to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This one. I want to read that first, first, uh, first Peter chapter 2 verse 9 for us so that we can be able to know who we are. We must be able to know who we are in the Lord. That you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy people, a holy nation. That we might proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. To be the light ready to call others out of darkness into the light of God. Preaching the gospel to them. We must not forget that you are the light of God. A city set upon the hill that cannot be hid. A city set on, on the hill. So we are, I am bringing this word so that to bring, to take you from, to, 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 to take you from obscurity to the limelight. May the Lord help us in the name of Amen. Jesus. And Amen. the purpose of this transformation is thought. Yes. His thoughts, thinking, your thoughts, you are what you think in order to shine for God. Hey, let me quickly say this. All we have been saying since is to be a light, to get connected is the spiritual aspect. Don't forget that what Jesus did for us, the work of the redemption, the benefits of redemption, covers prosperity and good health. Be the light. The Bible says in Psalm 112, verse 3, wealth and riches are in the house of the, of the righteous. There are so many of us that are righteous. There is no wealth. There, are no, there is no riches in our house. So we have to deliberately, deliberately take an action to get out of poverty. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So as to shine, but I, don't, I didn't see any light that, that, uh, that Lazarus, the beggar, in the book of Luke chapter 16, I didn't see any light that he shined, even though uh, the Bible says that uh, he, he, he made heaven. And let me tell you, it's not a story; it's just a parable to help uh, to help uh, to help us know to, to 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 help us establish a truth, the truth. Whether it's a parable or a story, he lived a beggarly life. He lived a beggarly life. The Bible says. <laughs> Uh, uh, and if you see, if you know what happened to him, the Bible says he desired, his desire is to eat the crumbs that fall. I want to change your desire this evening. But you begin to desire great and mighty things, great things, great things, big dreams. That will be our, we have to change our desire. Thought very quickly. You know what happened to Joseph? Joseph wanted to, 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 to put away Mary, when she was found pregnant, that in the process of thinking, I'm emphasizing to those people listening to me now, engage your mind in thinking, in thinking process. We pray, we study, we praise, and we do all those things. But do we think? Let's engage our brain. Because I've come to tell you that thinking is a spiritual activity. When you are thinking, then the Holy Spirit will minister to you. Joseph wanted to put away his wife, his wife to be Mary. In the process of thought, in the process of thinking, in Matthew 1 20, the Holy Spirit ministered to him. So while you are thinking, I challenge you women today that you begin to think of how to improve your life, not thinking about the challenges of life. How to improve your life, to be a light that shines, that affects the lives of others. Be a light that affects the lives of others. And don't forget that prodigal son. 
who was he didn't even have the food of the of the of the pigs to to eat. But the Bible, I love that story in the book of Luke chapter fifteen. The Bible says when he came to himself, it was in the process of thinking. So when, I don't know which piece you are. You are getting out of that situation in the mighty name of Jesus. He came to himself Amen. and he said, I will now return to my father. And I was immediately, immediately, no procrastination. So when you are thinking about your situation, you want to start a business. In fact, I have to quickly talk about that before my time gets up. You have to have good thoughts. Be thinking of how you can improve your life and improve the lives of your of others, then the Holy Spirit will minister to you what to do, and you begin to take action. That man, that woman with the flow of, of blood, with the flow of blood, when he heard about Jesus, he was thinking about all what Jesus did, and he was thinking about her own situation, how he can receive her healing. And immediately, the, the Holy Spirit ministered to, to her, go and touch the hem of his garment, and he said to herself what the Holy Spirit said to her. So when you are thinking, Immediately, when you are thinking of how your life will be better, the Holy Spirit will minister to you. And may you, I, I, I pray that you will heed, you will hear the voice of the Lord in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. So you have to believe you can make it. You can become rich. You can become rich. You can live a holy life. You can be healthy. We have seen, we have received a lot of life concerning. Divine health and concerning the healthy living stuff that our reverend is preaching. We can stay. We can stay without sickness. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be poor. And you don't have to be living in sin. May the Lord help us. The third one, in addition to your thoughts, your vision, as far as you can see, that God will give to you. Some people saw themselves as grasshoppers, even before their enemies, and they couldn't make it. They said they were not able. What are you saying to yourself? You are able, you are able, and you will Amen. all make it in Jesus' name. If you Amen. believe you can, or you believe you cannot, either way, you are right. But I just pray that you will believe you can, because Jesus told that man, He said, yes, If you can, all things are possible to him that believes. Praise the Lord. Very quickly, Amen. I'm going to talk about this before my time is up. I'm talking about diligence, careful and persistent work or effort. Diligence. It is one of the diamond virtues. It is a work ethic. They believe that work is good in itself. Some people are there, they are not working. And yet, they don't want to be hungry. And the Bible says, who does not work, must not, you not eat. God works. <laughs> Jesus said, and Jesus works. It's in the book of John chapter 5, verse 17. He said, until now, my father is working, and I also am working. Genesis 1, 1 to 31, Jesus, God did the work of creation. In Genesis 2, chapter 7, verse 7, God formed the man. That's work. He formed the man. In Genesis 2, 8, God, 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 in Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, God made the tree go to grow. In Genesis 2, 8, God planted the garden. Whom are you going to resemble for being lazy? There is no time for laziness. No. No time for laziness. You should not be busy. God works and gives us his working. So to, therefore, we have to work. We have to work. Romans 12, 11, we say, not lacking in diligence or in business, but then in the spirits, serving the Lord. Don't just, just cram all the Bible and begin to uh, speak in tongues and then go to church regular without doing anything. Engage yourself in work. Engage yourself in work. Very quickly, I think I have about a few minutes now. I just want to talk to you. Let's uh, let's conclude by examining by examining practical things you can do, especially in such a time. By Some people they have, they have put their life on hold. Business practical examples of businesses you can start. You don't need big money. You know that widow, the, the, the widow who did credit us in the book of Second Kings, chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. The widow cried to Elisha. He cried to Elisha for help. <laughs> the widow cried for Elisha for help. 
How often have we cried to people or the church to help? The, 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 the widow cried to Elisha to help pay her debt, so not to help her establish business. But at the end of the day, the, the Elisha said, ah, ah, What can I do for you? What exactly do you have? So I put it to you today. What do you have? How can you improve your life? What do you have? Don't ask, don't cry for to people to help you pay school fees, to help you pay your rent, to help you pay maternity bill, even to borrow money to feed. This has to end in this conference, and it will end in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can hear amen. It is the dawn amen. of the new season. Amen. It has to end. So to be a light, the, 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 the prophet said, how can I help you? What shall I do for you? What do you have? So I'm asking you now, you that are listening to me, what do you have? What skill do you have? What gift or talent do you have? What do you know how to do? What problem can you solve? What need can you meet? What can you think of, of doing? Especially at such a time like this. You did not have this to do. I have come to ask you, you can have a bread depot in your street. Or thank God you have, if you live in an estate, even on that your street. All you have, if you don't have anything, you have a jar of oil. That you have your mouth and you have your legs. Go about. Bible said the the, 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 the prophet told the widow, the widow said, Go to your neighbors, borrow versus not a few. Go all about your neighbor. Tell them you are selling bread. You have a bakery. You have a bakery and you have a depot. You know, in your streets, you can even be supplying the people that are selling. Again, okay? just get connected. You know, some of us that have bakeries in the church. Get connected to them. If you cry for help, it must be a help to establish business. I am so glad because there are so many, so many people right now in the church that have established businesses and they are doing well. Let it not be hard. If you want to shine, you have to walk so that you can eat well. You won't eat the bread of sorrow. I want to end it for you to go and read the book of Proverbs chapter 31. That woman there is beautiful. It's a light shining for God. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us as we Amen. end this conference. As Amen. we end this conference, the Bible says, our second test, Isaiah 60, verse 4. Arise, we will rise up and we will shine. For Amen. our life has come. We begin Amen. to rise to the glory of God. We begin to exhibit, display the, all the characteristics of light. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Stay blessed. Amen. Thank you, man. I will see you like I see. Murika Saka, but you will see. Murika Saka, but you will see. But you will see me like I see. Murika Saka. I will see you like I see. Murika Saka, but you will see me like I see. Thank you, Father. Blessed be unto thy name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That was Amen. the word in Amen. Jesus. God bless you more and more, ma, in Jesus' name. Amen. That was the word in season. Now it's time for testimonies. We've had people give testimonies, and we want to bless the name of the Lord from various branches. We've had people send in their testimonies, and we bless the name of the Lord. I'm going to be reading the testimonies. We have testimonies from four people. Sister Damilola Adefemi from TSF Ikeja. This is her testimony. She said that she attended the last women retreat, the prayer retreat at um, Achebo, that she attended it reluctantly because she just lost her son, and she was very, very depressed. But a sister encouraged her to come and to attend the program. She said that she wants to testify to the name of the Lord that the Lord met with her at that prayer retreat. And the Lord had a, peti a petition that she became pregnant that very month and the Lord blessed her with another child. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Another testimony from our sister Ngozi Okata. 
from TSF, Ako Wajo. She's testifying to the power of the Lord that she experienced also during the prayer conference. You, when, if you are not at that prayer retreat of last August, you missed. She said that she's been believing the Lord for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for many years. A lot of people have laid hands on her and all of that. She did not receive that. In fact, she thought she had a demon that was preventing her from receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But she said that during that prayer conference, that the power of God descended upon her right where she sat. It wasn't even that anybody laid hands on her. That right where she sat, the power of God descended upon her. She fell under the anointing and she started speaking in tongues. Isn't God Glory. wonderful? <laughs> and God Amen. is precious. Amen. Another testimony Hallelujah. from uh, an, an anonymous sister this time around. She blessed the name of the Lord for his faithfulness and his keeping power. She said during the prayer retreat last year, the same prayer retreat in August, she said that she had a premonition to pray for her husband, and she did, and she trusted God. But that she thanked God because immediately after the conference, a day after the conference, that she got a call. The enemy attacked her husband, but her God averted it. She got a call immediately the day after, and the husband, that the husband was ill because the husband was not at home. And she went to see the husband, and they did scan and all of that. The doctors checked the husband, that they saw a blood clot, you know, in the scan that they did. But it was so wonderful that that clot was not at a place that could cause stroke or that could cause damage to the husband. And that she's testifying to the power of the Lord that God has healed the husband now. He is whole, he is healthy. God has raised him. Praise the Lord. The Hallelujah. From her sister Bukola TSF Oshobo. She said that during the last women conference, that uh, 2018, she was one of the people that was empowered. And she was provided a grinding machine during that conference. And she has been using that grinding machine till today. And that grinding machine has been a blessing to her and her family that she was able to pay her son's school fees through the money that she makes from that grinding machine. And that money has been a blessing to her family. And that's what they have been living by. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the testimonies that we have, and we want to just give God the glory. We want to ex exalt the name of the Lord for his faithfulness because it was only him. It can only be by him. It can, it can only be by his power. Lord, we thank you for these testimonies. I know there are so many others too that have their testimonies in one way or the other. And I know also that as a result of this conference, Lord, you will meet you with each and every one. And your you. name will continue. Continually be glorified. These testimonies, Lord, we bless you and we soak in the blood of Jesus. And we say that, Lord, much more than this you will do, even in each and every one in our lives in Jesus' name. Bless the name of the Lord. For we pray Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I think it's time now for our speaker to come up, Dr. Ololade Akiriola. Yesterday was wow. I'm so sure today is going to be wow, wow. And I know that we are all ready and the Lord will, the word, there will be a word that will come forth that you will know that yes, this word is for me. Dr. Akiriola, please. Let's with Jesus joy welcome her. Praise the Lord. You are welcome, ma. Hallelujah. Thank you, ma. You are welcome, ma. I bless you, ma. Over to you, ma. Ololade Akinriola is a trained physiotherapist and graduated from Obafemi Awolowo University in Leife, Nigeria. She has worked in reputable hospitals locally and abroad. She is a certified health, safety and environment HSE professional UK. 
She is also a certified lymphedema therapist USA, registered holistic nutritionist and doctor of osteopathy Canada. She has attended other professional development programs locally and internationally. Olalade is a passionate integrative medicine practitioner with a view of helping people achieve wellness and live optimal and balanced lives using cutting-edge methods. Please welcome Olalade Akinriola. Good evening, everyone. Good, Good evening, evening, ma. It's nice to be here this evening. Thank you very much. Um, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for gathering us together again. Thank you for the word that has come forth. Thank you for the testimonies. Holy Spirit, we bless your holy name. In the name of Jesus, Father, tonight, Please speak to us, teach us, open our heart to understanding, and let everyone be blessed. Let there be healing. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. 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 Um, I want to appreciate Daddy and Mommy again for this opportunity. It's nice to be here. And all the coordinators, God bless you real good. Thank you very much. I really appreciate my, my invite. I won't take it for granted. Um, um, yesterday, um, you know, the topic is coping, um, coping with um, mental and emotional stress, how we can cope with that. And, you know, we spoke a lot about that yesterday. And I will just quickly do a recap of what we have said yesterday, just a quick one. You know, we, we talked about um, the causes of stress and how we can alleviate stress. And um, I remember that time, I think I stopped at um, some of these things we talked about, uh, how to relieve our stresses. Um, we talk about um, exercise and all that. And I, I, I think I actually debate on issue of sleep and exercise so that we know the, uh, the importance of doing all those things. And um, we talked about, um, you know, considering supplements to support support yourself, reduce caffeine intake, energy drinks, all these soft drinks, they are not good for us. So a quick one to quickly start. Um, so I will continue by saying the, the other, um, what other things we can do, you know, to help us manage our stress and, and cope very well. Don't forget yesterday, I said that um, um, anyone that is having um, good emotional health is, is just as, is equivalent to overall good health. So it's very important to achieve that, that your mental and emotional health is optimal, okay? And I said again, this is very important that um, if you see anyone having good health, it's actually that, um, they, they have realized to, you know, take charge of their, of their health, you know. They can control their emotions, they can control their behavior, they can control their moods, you know. They don't allow what is happening externally to, to affect them internally. So we have to be empowered, you know. We do this consciously and intentionally that, oh, I won't let this get to me, whatsoever that is going through, because it's going to affect you know, affect our health. Like, um, we know we see a lot of issues and cases and they will tell you how they had the particular problem and you'll be like, my God, if they had uh, managed it well, they won't have this um, problem. Um, I remember the lady, um, she lost her, she lost her, um, she lost her husband, you know, she has four children and she lost her husband. And of course it was so, it was so pathetic and all that she was, you know, she was scattered. She was mourning for, for months. Nobody could console her. And at the end of the day, she had stroke. So that's what I'm talking about now. She has stroke right now. And I don't think she was actually doing anything serious. 
So with four children, <laughs> it, it's so sad, you know, she should have, of course, I'm not saying she should not mourn and, you know, put herself together and move on. Now she's, she has stroke and she's down with stroke. And you know what stroke is? There's nothing you can actually do than just to con I mean, continue to do a like kind of palliative management, especially anybody that has gone into conventional medicine to approach stroke. So I want to encourage everyone. And you know what? Mom uh, Babalala, God bless him. I was so blessed uh, with your teaching, with your preaching. You know, Mommy said uh, that ladies, I challenge you today. And that, that, that one got me. <laughs> he said, she said we should get thinking on positive things. So those are the things, when you do that, it will actually distress you. Once, once you focus on the right thing, of course, we have a lot of issues around us, but we should try to focus on the right thing. She said that, and I was like, woo, this is good. And you know, and she said another thing again, thinking on the way out. There's no way as a child of God, Holy Spirit will minister to you. It will minister um, the solution to you on how to go about it. And that's another way to distress, really, because you just, it, and it shows that actually you trust God, you trust the Holy Spirit to handle the situation for you. Then, you know, getting worried and bottle the situation and, you know, be thinking that, ah, how would this thing happen? And it's better we talk to our Father. And those are the main means of, you know, ways to, you know, to distress. So um, another quick one. So we are back now in the teaching on how to distress. Some of the solution we are going to talk about quickly is um, I won't talk for too long so that if there's any questions I can answer and um, by God's grace, God help me. So another quick one is that you may not believe this. This one is for super quick, you know, <laughs> easy way to distress or stress uh, reliever is to try to chew gum. I know if you think it, I could chewing gum be actually be of any benefit. Really, it helps a lot because this is where it works. I try to connect the physiological effects now. It's not that you are just chewing gum just for chewing sake. No, you know, I, I everything I try to do, you know, you, even you are trying to enjoy, relax it. Let's let's connect it to to the body now. You know, when we chew gum, it causes a brain wave. Cinema, I mean, similar to those. Um, of similar to those people that are relaxed. You know, there's a thing, a kind of pseudo feeling that the brain will work with and um, it will promote blood flow in the brain. And when there's blood flow, there's more oxygen. Anywhere there's a lot of blood, there's more oxygen. And of course, you have more oxygen, pain goes away. And of course, it's a beautiful way to distress. So train gum may help you. You just get some sticks in your bag. If you are stressed, you are worried, you know, you just get one hitting and it's very easy. You don't even need to wait for exercising and all that. Right there, you can chew gum. And truly, it helps to, you know, most of the things I'm telling you, I've, I've done it. <laughs> I'm not just saying what I've not, you know, what I've not done or practiced before. So basically, um, chewing gum will help you to relax, at least for that time. And it may also promote the well-being and reduce the stress. Okay, so I will encourage you if you want to take chewing gum, try to go for sugar free, free of aspartame, and probably with, um, I think, uh, Zilitol. Zilitol is much better. And ju just check the pa pack of the chewing gum. I can't, the types I hit, I don't think we can get it around. So I will have given you the names. So um, for us, again, it's good to, um, you know, social support is very important. It's very, very important. So you have to get connected with friends and families. It's very, very good, you know. Being part of a friend network gives us a sense of belonging and, and self, I mean, self-worth, you know, especially in, in times, you know, in tough times. And it's just good. Connect with people that, you know, they're always positive. They don't give you negative vibes, you know, especially children. Spending time with friends and children helps a lot. And, you know, I will still have to link it back to medical um, advantage is that it releases oxytocin. That, that is another hormone. It's a natural stress reliever. You know, yesterday I was talking about the stress hormone when we do exercise, that one goes down and the morphine will come up. That one will reduce our, you know, make us to have good mood. This one again, oxytocin is a natural stress reliever. So when we are having issues stress, it's better why not call up your friends and not necessarily tell the person what you are going to, just to greet them and, you know, chat with them. It will really help, you know, it will calm you down. So it's very important to have strong social ties 
that may help you get through you know, stressful times in, or any time you're having um, issues. And you know, it really low, it lowers, um, um, lowers um, your risk of um, anxiety. Okay, another thing I want to talk about is laugh. I, you know, laughter is beautiful. I want you to laugh. I want to talk about laughter. Laughter is so beautiful. Please, um, I, I want to see everybody smiling. At least, please, I want to see your face smiling. <laughs> At least for two seconds. <laughs> laughter, it's medicine. I trust, trust me. <laughs> and that is one thing about um, Mommy Akiyemi, she's always laughing. You always see her laughing and, you know, she has a wonderful sense of humor. I love that. <laughs> so, you know, it re it's relieves stress. That is the truth. And, you know, anatomically, I can't remember the muscles now, so that I don't want to quote the wrong muscles. We use lesser muscles to laugh and um, we use more muscles to frown. And in most cases, when you keep frowning, of course, your skin gets wrinkled. You know, you look older than your age. You keep frowning. The muscles, facial muscles are so tense. And even if you wear makeup, it will not, you know, it will not come up. So it's very important for us to laugh. Laughter, you know, and of course, you're not even buying it. So why can't you laugh and be happy with yourself? Okay. So another thing is that it's good. You can watch maybe funny TV show. It's not bad shows, it's good for, you know, we can watch that, hang out with friends who can make you laugh once in a while, it's good. You know, it's very important to find humor in everyday life. You know, it's very, very important. So I will encourage us to laugh. And even if you, you know, it's just that Nigeria is something else. If you smile at some people, they'll be thinking that, what, what do you want? But, you know, it's good to, to smile and to laugh at, at, every, at every opportunity. There was a study among people with cancer that they found that um, if, because they laugh more, okay, their treatment it was better compared to those people that are distracted with you no, know, thinking, oh, cancer is going to kill them and all that. So people that find, you know, even in the midst of the problem, they laugh a lot. They discover that their stress level is relieved and their recovery was better than the ones that are not laughing. So you can imagine laughter is a serious issue, okay? And um, another thing I want to tell you to cope with the mental stress and emotional stress is that um, we have to learn to say no, okay? We have to learn to say no. That shows that um, we can take control over the parts of our lives, you know, that, that, that can cause us stress. Learn to say no if you know you cannot do some things. You know, we can't do everything at the same time. So it's not all stressors, actually not all stressors again are within your control, but some are. So the ones that, that are within your control, you just say no to this, it's very important. Just say no, no, I can't juggle many responsibility together. No, let's do this, you know. It's just learn to say no. Don't try to impress everybody every time to, you know, I have to let them know that I'm a good person and all that, you know. Say it in a polite way. Ah, no, I can't do this. No, I can't take this off because you know your stress level and you don't want it to, you know, to go high and you are just trying to manage yourself. Okay, so saying no, it's not, um, a, it's not, uh, it's in fact, it's a great virtue. I would say that it's, it's not a weakness. So we have to know when to say no. Okay, another thing I want to tell us is um, we should learn to avoid procrastination, okay? If we need to do something right away, it's better for us to do it. Because if we procrastinate, ah, I'll do it tomorrow. And maybe probably you have a deadline or you're supposed to do something. And let me give, for, for example, maybe you're supposed to buy a particular, maybe textbook or something for, for your child. And you say, don't worry, we'll buy it next week. And the, and the boy is telling you, mommy, we need to buy the textbook by Tuesday. Don't worry, next week we'll get it. And maybe you are now trying to get a textbook. Maybe go to one bookshop, you can have it. And you are so much under stress because if the boy doesn't get it, probably the boy will not sit for, a, for an exam or something. Those are the things, you know, we have to prioritize our, our whatever we want to do. So procrastination can actually cause us to, to, to have stress. So you just prioritize your needs and make time for it. That is very important. It's just, okay, I'm going to do this today, tomorrow. And you know, you don't model things up 
and it's good to write things down. You know, journaling is very important. Just write it down. Even if you are doing just three things in a, in a day, just write it down. You know, it makes you feel that you are organized, okay? Because procrastination has been related to stress, okay? So what you have to do, do it right away. Than you know, sitting back and then um, trying to make up when, you know, it's it's um, the deadline is closed. Um, another thing I would like to talk about is um, practice mindfulness. What do I mean by that? You actually this this is just you know you practice the present moment. You know, maybe you're in your office or you're in the place of your business and all that. You don't let your mind go away and start thinking about somebody. Maybe you're in Lagos, you're thinking about somebody in Ibado. Ah, if I see this woman, this is what I'm going to tell the person, da, da, da. Or you are, you are right in your place of work or whatever, and you are thinking, oh, ah, if I get home, I will wash. If I, okay, I will fold clothes, I will do this. You know, those things will cause anxiety. Because if you are planned like that and you get home, you couldn't do it, you will feel, you know, you will feel the kind of worry it's going to give you is going to cause stress. Don't forget, we are trying to make our life, you know, get ourselves arranged and know what to do. Okay. So it's very important if you are right here, like now that I'm talking and we are in, in, in the women's program, let our mind be here. Okay. We don't think about, oh, ha, when I go this way, okay, after tonight, this is what I'm going to do. It's good to think that way, but not to focus for too long. Okay, so when we practice this, it will help us to lower uh, symptoms of anxiety and depression, actually. So it's kind of, you practice the present moment. Think of what you are doing right now and not allowing your mind to stray left and right, travel from here to everywhere, you know. So God will help us. And um, another thing is um, cuddling. I know you will like this. Me, I like it too. <laughs> cuddling is very good, you know because the way God created us, and anatomically, we have nerves going through our body, okay? And um, it's like our cells are sensitive. If it has, if it's experienced something gentle, a good touch. So I will encourage you, cuddle, cuddle with your husband. Hugging is very important. With your husband, it's good. Or uh, maybe female to female, or anybody you are close to, you know, it's good to hug, it's good to cuddle, and kissing, I would say kissing is good for, for, the, for the married. It's very good. You know, why is it good? I will explain. I love to explain a lot. So yeah, you know, especially long kissing, right? We are all mommies here, so I can explain myself. At the same time, again, it releases oxytocin. That thing lowers the uh, cortisol. That cortisol is the stress hormone in the body. So it's a way that once you do that for a long time, before you know, your blood pressure comes down, heart rate is fine, and all the funny physical symptoms of stress, you're just seeing them, you know, diminishing, and you don't even experience such again. So those are the things that I want to encourage us to be doing. It helps a lot. It's not for, oh, oh, I don't want to do these things. Maybe it's a sin, you know, please don't be religious about this thing, especially with your spouse. God help us. So another thing, it's you can listen to soothing music. You know, have you ever, you know, you alone in your room or you're sitting wherever you are, have you danced? Not, you're not waiting to get to church or get into um, any maybe a party or something or something like that. It's good. You just, you just dance. While you're in your room, play nice music, dance and all that. It's, it's working. It relaxes. It's very good. You know, they do a lot like this. We tell the seniors, especially to dance. It helps to help their hormone because most seniors, they are not menstruating again, no more um, estrogen level. So they have more for progesterone and it affects them. But when they dance, there's a connection of, of those, um, of such movement in the body. And of course you can't be dancing without a good heart, you know, without a merry heart, let me say that. Because once you are dancing, it shows that there's a connection. You are happy about something and, you are just enjoying yourself. It's a good way to, to relieve stress. You know, it's very good. Then this one is good for you to practice. It's good, very good. It's, it's um, deep breathing. Deep breathing is very, very good to practice. You can just lie on your bed and lie on your bed, I mean, on your back and, you know, be in a relaxed position. When you're in a relaxed position and... 
breathing and how you breathe in through your nose and you breathe out through your mouth. I will just show you that, you know, you are lying down like this, straight on your bed, you know, just looking at the ceiling, straight on your bed like that. And you breathe in through your nose. When you breathe in like that, hold for like five seconds. And you breathe out through your mouth. It's actually, it, it distresses because the effect, anatomically, I don't want to be saying, um, you know, try to explain big language so that you will not, you know, I just want you to understand what I'm saying because it actually works the um, sympathetic nerve system. And that's a signal that in your body, it, it will bring the signal of fight and flight mode. But when you do a deep in breathing, okay, it releases, um, um, it releases you, it, it releases a kind of relaxation in your body. Okay, I don't want to use big medical terms. I'm looking for a way to, okay, when you do deep breathing and you, and you breathe out through your mouth. You do deep breathing through your nose. You hold for five seconds and you can even feel it down to your tummy and you breathe out like that through the mouth slowly. Okay, it helps to, to slow your heart rate. And this makes you, it allows you to feel more peaceful. It's, it's, it's very wonderful. You can try, you can do like um, breathing in and breathing out. Maybe you can do like 10 or 15 repetitions. It's very good. It's, you enjoy a kind of, you feel more at peace, tension in the heart, in the chest, you know, it just comes down like that. So those are the things you can do, okay? So I'm not sure if you have pets, those are the things I've done before. If you have dogs or something, spend some time with them. It's quite interesting. It's, it's, a very, it's a, another good quality way to actually help you reduce anxiety. So. The bottom line of everything we are talking about here, okay, is to reduce stress, okay? And I want you to know when to seek help, okay? After doing all these things, you have tried a lot of things and nothing is working. It's very important to go and see a professional counselor or a therapist. It's very important and just to keep it to yourself because why am I saying this is that, uh, you know, our mommy has talked about divine health. It's very important we work in divine health. And all these things happen when we are working in ignorance. And we don't want you to do that. That's why I'm saying this, that we can work in divine health. Practicing, you know, eating well, doing the right thing. Of course, where Tony, our daddy has said a lot of things like this so that we can actually work in the way God has ordained for us. But however, if there's any issue that you have, you know, you are, I mean, experiencing, like chest pain, um, shortness of breath, you know, you are seeing like a back pain or jaw pain. Many people don't know that. When you have a jaw pain, back pain, your pain radiating, you know, from the shoulder to arm, and you keep sweating, dizziness, you know, you feel nauseated and all that, please go and see um, a professional and let them know because some of, some of these things are the signs, warning signs of, uh, of a heart attack and not only stress symptoms, okay? Anything you are feeling that you know this thing has been persisting for, for a long time, sweating, dizziness, you know, you feel nauseated, you know, you, you have back pain, and maybe the pain is radiating from the shoulder to arm, and there's chest pain and all that, and there's shortness of breath. So it's not COVID-19, it, it could be heart attack symptoms, okay? And of course, by God's grace, we will not experience such in the name of Jesus. Yesterday, I wanted to talk about, um, I said yesterday that one of the causes of um, um, stress, emotional stress and depression is sex, lack of satisfaction in sex. So I said, I want to discuss this. Why, why am I discussing this? Many of my clients, I've seen many in my, many in my practice. So I just want to you know, encourage us, I know, um, because many of us will not talk about this. You rather keep it to yourself because we think it's a sin. God will help us. And then um, we have seen lives, you know, suffer because of all these, you know, petty, petty things. So I want to discuss a bit about sex. I said that yesterday. Is that what leads to distress, I mean, this um, interest in sex, okay? We all know majorly it's emotional issues such as um, stress, depression, anxiety, um, memory of abuse or rape. I have that a lot. And unhappiness with your body. Maybe you don't, don't like the way your body looks again. Oh, 
my breast is now flat and all this, my heart beat on me and all that. But tonight I'm praying for anyone who has gone through sexual abuse. That one is very common that we see around. Okay. I'm praying for, for their healing tonight in the name of Jesus. Anyone that has gone through sexual abuse or you know, molestation in one way or the other that is now affecting their, their sexual relationship with their husband, I pray that will be healing tonight by the power of the Holy Spirit. But however, let it go and allow the Holy Spirit to heal you. It's very important. So you don't keep harboring what has happened maybe 20 years ago or all these things. Don't forgive yourself and let it go because your father is happy with you. Your heavenly father is happy with you. He's not looking at that. So why are you focusing on it? You know, it's just flesh and devil will use that to keep us bound. And then, uh, you know, you feel bitter, you feel your own forgiveness comes in. And that's another work of flesh that we allow the devil to, you know, a demon to sit on our case. You know, we, we give the devil a full stone. But I pray tonight that anyone that is going through such, such experience in one way or the other, the Holy Spirit will touch you and you'll be healed in Jesus' name. So encourage yourself with scriptures. It's very important. We have to encourage ourselves with uh, scriptures. Always remember, I will say that again, the love of our Father. Jesus is happy with you. Please don't, don't keep thinking about the past and all that. So it's even good for you to seek help or gently if you are, uh, you are actually expressing a kind of disinterested in, I mean, uh, disinterest in your sex, in your sex and your sexual life. It's very important to, to seek help. So another reason why I'm um, talking about this is that, you know, we have different ideologies, different types. So I want to let you know what happens if you stop having sex, even as a woman that you think, oh, I'm now a mommy, I'm close to a grandma. Of course, once you are getting to a particular age, sex drive reduces, but that doesn't mean it should not happen at all, okay? Because, um, and of course, we have some, some middle-aged women among us that, that they are still in their active life and all that. So in, I want to relate this to the Bible. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3, okay, the Bible says that, let the husband render unto the wife due benefits. And likewise, also the wife unto the husband. And that is what he's talking about. Because I've seen many people, many, many people having problems in this issue of sexual issue. And it's actually causing a lot of problems. And remember in Proverbs 5.18, the Bible says that, uh, let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. I want to use that, permit me to say, rejoice with the husband of thy youth, okay? And permit me to say that because I want to use that advice versa. Yeah, that let us rejoice in the husband of our youth. So um, everything that happens to you when you stop having sex implies that uh, you are losing out on some out benefits of having sex. So I'm trying to tell you the benefits now so that uh, it will help you and it can do a lot of um, good for you, okay? So, because we've had even your menopause, ah, no more sex, it's not good for you to have sex and all that. Uh, even if you are young, it's very important to communicate with your spouse and um, let them know your needs, okay? But not totally, you know, get off because there's a lot of issues and all that. So, um, if you don't do that regularly, okay? you will have experienced anxiety and stress and depression. It happens. I've seen many cases like that, okay? It happens. And if you don't do that, especially people in menopause or premenopausal stage, they go through something they call um, a, a, a dry vagina. Okay, why did I say that? Because the, the, the vagina is made up with a lot of tissues. So if you stop back, you don't want to do that. It, it's going to be very dry and it could be irritating. You won't know that you are just, you know, irritated suddenly and all that, and it's because you stop doing that. So I'm trying to let us know uh, the benefits of all these things, okay? So they call it, uh, people go through dry spells in the room, <laughs> you know? No more, you have given birth, nothing like that. I only do it when I feel like, you know, which is not supposed to be so, okay? Because, Normally, sex makes your body release hormones. That is the way it works. That's the way God created it. When you have sex, it makes, of course, I'm not saying we should do it like you are eating food. Of course, do I'm, what I'm talking about, abstinence is no, no, no. 
medically, it won't help, okay? It will not help medically, especially to the body. So sex makes your body release hormones. Like I said earlier, that ox uh, oxytocin and endomorphins. And those are the major hormones that manage the effect of stress in our body, you know? So especially oxytocin, it has had the benefits of helping you to sleep. Okay, let me tell you one story. Okay, you may not, you may just laugh at it. That was the, it was a senior colleague of mine that was treating this man about over 15 years ago. And um, he had, he had high blood pressure. The man should be in his early 50s. High blood pressure was so bad. Of course, he has been on medication. He has been on everything. It wasn't working. So I remembered that my senior colleague came to meet us at the, at the staff room, I was not talking, ah, what do we do? This man has been on this for a long time, that, that, and he has been taking medication, nothing was working. Until they sat him down, they counseled him that, do you know what? Then the beautiful thing I'm not saying is good, but you know, I'm looking at, they, we are looking at it in the way of um, medical now. He, he had two, he, he has two wives. So they told him, can you please be having sex with them every other day? That if one cannot help, and the other one can help. You know, this man did this for one month. You, you will not believe it. <laughs> the prayer blood pressure went down. <laughs> and they had to cut down all these medications. You know, is it not interesting? So I'm just going to let you know that the effect of this in the body is very powerful. Because after doing everything, nothing is working. You know, we have to look inside and, 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 and see what is actually happening to us. Okay, so, and when we do that, Sex again, it helps us to, it helps our brain to grow neurons. And when that thing, um, the, the, I mean, the, the growth of the neurons work together in general, which will help you to prevent memory loss, actually. So this is research that I'm telling you. And it shows that sex, often sex are better at recalling memories. It will help you because the brain cells, they will not die as in the neurons that help with memory, they, they grow again when you have sex because all these things, there's a release of hormone, okay? So that's the way it works. And, um, you know, of course, we all know that it helps our relationship to be healthy with, with our spouse, okay? It really helps, it really helps. So why not do that and do the right thing, you know, because of your own health. And another thing is that um, it helps the immune system. It will help you to fight you know, small, small illness here and there. Some things that you don't need to take um, antibiotics about, maybe for rather, uh, what you don't need to take antibiotics for, maybe cold or something like that. It will help your immune system to grow. So it has, you know, I don't want to keep, you know, trying to link the anatomy together, but the thing that it does for you is that it, immu it builds your immune system and it plays an important role. For, for the immune system, for a particular antibodies in the body to, to go higher. So which helps, and um, if I call the antibody um, immunoglobin or something, I can't remember. So it will help you, okay? So another thing is that um, it helps your vaginal walls to, to not get dry, especially for the people, for the women going through premenopausal stage or menopausal stage, it will help you. It's very, very important. Don't totally be, you know, stay away from it. When there is um, vaginal dryness, there's always irritation. You start behaving funny and you won't know. So that's why it's good to talk to a practitioner or a specialist in cases like that you can supplement, okay? A lot of things you can do to supplement. So even for the benefit for men, it helps with prostate cancer, okay? The reduction of prostate cancer because they say, that there was a research that the research that says that um, having for men having often you know having sex regularly there are chances to reduce and um, prostate cancer basically you know when they ejaculate the more they ejaculate uh, the lower the chance of prostate cancer that's what it means medically so those are the things i want to talk about and then um, i want to give some time for us to ask questions but all said and done uh you, you all know that um, I should have this, that uh, our daddy, Reverend Akim, is an expert in natural medication area. It's better for us to check his YouTube and uh, we can see videos on fruits, vegetables, not uh, supplements and all that. And of course we should, you know, take this advantage. 
than looking for conventional medicine, medical treatment up and down, okay? And God will help us in Jesus and you'll be mightily blessed. So that's what I want to share this evening. So I want to pray now and then we ask questions, okay? Maybe we should ask questions so that um, we will not take our, because of our time. Do we have any question that um, you want me to talk about? So this is the time. Do we have questions? I have two already. Thank you yes, so ma much, Ma, for that session. Number one, somebody yes. asked a question. So what happens to widows? What kind of advice can we give to widows? Okay. Which um, that's it. This? Yes. Um, well, we all know that widows can remarry, but if they're already old, okay, and they want to stay like that, they don't want to get married, you supplement, you know, there's some supplements you can take to support you, to help your mood, not to, you know, not to misbehave and not to get to a level, you know, cranky, so that you won't get to a level like you want to, you know, that will increase the stress in the body because you prefer to stay like that. And probably maybe the person is, you know, is an old, you know, she's an old widow. She, she may not want to do that. So is, that's where we encourage supplementation, okay? So okay. that you help the body. To calm down. Okay. Okay. That's my okay, then. That. okay. Thank you very much, Ma. Then another question Can family planning cause stress? And if it can, what should one do? Very well. If I, this is one of the major problems people are going through, there's nothing as doing the natural family planning. That is true because at that time, you know, they want to reduce the estrogen level, especially for. Um, someone that is a middle age, you don't want to have a baby, you do family planning. It is not totally advisable, I would say that. It can cause stress because the family planning, depending on the type you do, there's a reduction of estrogen, there's an imbalance in your hormone system. And when there's an hormonal imbalance, of course, it will cause other problems in your body. So definitely you'll be, you'll be stressed. So most of the time I will advise because your nutrients, Whatever you need in the body is depleted when you are on family planning medication or whatever they are used for you. So it's, in fact, many of them, they keep complaining of heartburn, obesity, um, H. pylori, all funny, I mean, all these conditions that, that can be attributed to digestive system. So all those things like this, it, it causes stress too, definitely. So I will encourage the person to supplement. You have to know the kind of... Um, um, family plan the person has done so that to give the right supplement. But basically, hormonal imbalance is in place. And when there's hormonal imbalance, there's trouble. The body will never be, be balanced. And of course, you have to compensate for with, with supplementation. That is the answer for that. OK, so I mean, it has to be supplement, supplement, yes. supplement. Yes, then the medication, medication. I want to ask this question also. I mean, we have the question. You've um, somebody just sent in another another question now, and um, she said, "Will just allowing sex regularly, even though your emotion is not there, still help you not to get anxious and depressed, knowing fully well that the difference between sex there is difference between sex and love making." I mean, is you, mm -hmm. just lying down there without your mind being there. Yes. Will it help yes. you? Okay, in that case, we know that there's a deep seated problem because maybe the lady is just doing it for doing sake. That's when I said, I have that you just want to fulfill all righteousness. Oh, so this is a marital obligation. Let me just do that. Okay, that's fine. You don't want your husband to go out, or let me just do that. But down deep, it shows that there's a deep seated problem somewhere that we need to address first. You know, I said you have to love yourself. I see many people because they've gone through sexual abuse before. I, I spoke with a lady two months ago. This year, she only had sex with her husband three times. And the guy started drinking because of that. And the guy couldn't go out to go and look for another lady. When I got talking with her, she told me that because she was molested when she was, you know, many years ago. We have to, you know, it's like an orientation. It shows that the person has an emotional problem. That's why you are not with your husband. We've seen many, you know, <laughs> These things are complex. We need, you need to talk to a counselor. So we have seen cases that some many some ladies they have multiple partners. 
So when they are having, and they didn't address that spiritually, that's another thing. So you see, when they are having, you know, fulfilling their marital uh, obligation, their mind is elsewhere. But the truth is that um, when there is touch, so we are trying to link it to anatomical way. When there is touch in the body generally, the, it, there will be an release of several hormones that help the body to actually rejuvenate and calm down. So that's why we are saying that. But if you say that um, your mind is not there, you are just doing it, you have to address the, the source of the problem first. Okay. So that's what I so the person, what, what, the person is saying, the person is saying that what if I mean she's not she's not receiving any love from the husband. If the love is not there and she's just doing it, I mean when the woman oh, yeah. the man is not there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, we have um, some, we have some, some men are not nice. That's the truth. They don't even know how to make love with their, with their wife. What can you we know? do? What, what, what can that a is, woman that do? Is where we need, yeah, they will, that woman needs help. You, you have to talk to your husband. You know your love language. You have to talk to your husband. This is the way I want you to do that will help me. And if, if he's not listening, that's where we cover up. Why not talk to somebody that's a counselor, a therapist? Don't sit down. Drag the man there that you don't know how to make love. I'm not this, I'm not the wood, you know? That's the problem we have with men. So in cases like this, and we have to balance, we have to talk to some men, because some men are so, you know, the way they do, just do it and get out. We are not like that, we are wired uh, separately. So for that woman, differently. Yeah, separate, um, differently. So for that woman, please talk to your husband, let your husband know your love life. And um, I believe by the power of the Holy Spirit, you know what? The Holy Spirit is interested in all these things we are talking about. So it's not uh, that's true. It's not carnal, you know. It's not carnal at all, because He created it, and it's honorable to do it, marry it in, in, in with our husband. So why not talk to the Holy Spirit that God put this man for me, and then um, tell him your your love language, what actually makes you good, you know? So that's my advice for the person. Thank you. I mean, the person actually has follow-up questions but i think this person would actually need counseling like you said because she says she just feels like a sex doll the man is just not interesting in any way you know but she's just fulfilling all righteousness so okay. i think if, like you said uh if, if she doesn't mind if, if she doesn't mind maybe she should get to uh mommy akinyemi and if i will if she will, if she's available i can talk with her you know with okay. advice and prayer I've seen bad cases being reversed, so that's not a problem. God will stop okay. that one soon. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Another question says yes, that what do you do when your sex libido is low? What do you do? What can you do? Okay, that's um, a bit medical. Okay, so I we, we can, I can prescribe some things to do. Basically, it's linked. It's linked to the mood. Okay. When your mood is not fine, when your mood is something, you don't think of all these things, especially for women. When we are not happy, somebody is coming to you, if you feel like, are you, are you all right? That's what you tell the person. So when you actually experience, if the person ex is experiencing a regular low libido, of course, you can give, you know, we say supplements. I would rather treat you naturally. When I know it's not working or it's a very it's a severe case, that is life-threatening, that is when I introduce um, synthetic medication. But we can easily, there are a lot of things you can take, maca roots, maca roots is very powerful. You can take that. It's a very good supplement to be to, to use to help with um, uh, sexual dysfunction. Maca roots, you said? Yes, ma'am. Is it a food to get or something? No, 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 it's, um, it's a Chinese herb. But it has been, you know, they put it uh, in, in, in a form of supplement. So you can get it, most of the time you get in tablets. That, that, and of course, you can get it in a villa. If you have a you always provide this easily. That's the truth. And we know that a villa is, oh. a, for me, those are the places you can get organic and pure um, um, all supplements and all that, because you have several products outside there that are not even organic that are even, they even cause problems when you are taking it. So maca root is a very good, one of the supplements that can be, that can be taken for low libido. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, if you have questions that you want to ask, you can please show by raise of hand electronically yeah. and um, we'll ask the host to unmute you so that you can ask your questions. Otherwise, you can type your question in the chat box. One thing she said yesterday that I am looking forward to is 
girls out. I mean, yeah, I have some friends that, that nice. we, we decided. <laughs> in fact, no. we just decided that we're going to do sleepover. You know, so that would be beautiful. Like, to get ready. You know, <laughs> <laughs> when you have to sleep, <laughs> when you sleep over. Because just one day, mommy, I can't even one day is not too much. No, where will the husband of the hostess sleep <laughs> when you go there to when sleep? We go into this, if we go to the guest room, we will do sleep over. You don't worry. <laughs> Mr. Adi, let me just keep this in. You know, okay, Dr. Lalage, thank you very much. Yes, Some ma people issue with stress, especially with sex, comes as a result of the kind of family planning they use. That's so can you much. just chip in some things about family planning? Because um, that's what affects some people as regards their sex drive or living. That, that's very true, ma. Um, in the case of family planning, I would rather say you use um, safe period. You count, if you know how to count your ovulation, the time of your ovulation, there'll be no, um, no intercourse. That's the best thing to, to do because there's always an effect in your body if you take family planning. And that's true. Mommy, you are very right. When they take family planning, it reduces because your hormone is affected. You know, we have the, sex, the reproductive hormone is estrogen and progesterone and other ones. So estrogen is actually reduced. And that actually affects the body. That's why you have to supplement to support, you know, you sometimes we give low dose of estrogen to boost the estrogen level so that uh, your mood will be, you know, will be calm and you feel like, you feel like it again. So I would rather say it's better we do natural um, family planning. So that's the one. If I tell you one now, we're on hair, I won't say it so that I won't think, my God, this is crooked. <laughs> Please tell us. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Yes, ma. Hold on, hold on, Mr. Bayomi. Hold on, please. We'll call this you. is a female we'll call forum. You I can see you. Place your hand. <laughs> Go ahead, ma. It's a very uh, If I say you say, ah, is it true? Actually, uh, it's, it's working. It's working. But I will say it. And I'm not saying we should go and do it. But I will just say it. It's um, actually after intercourse right away. Use salt. You want to go and use salt to wash through. Salt and water. I'm telling you, it will, the sperm will just die. It will be, you wish you to wash plenty of salt and water. It's working. But I didn't say you should go and do it too. You know, I said it's a crooked way. <laughs> 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 you know, but you know, a lot of salt and water, but you know, you may not want to do, but the safest thing is that you do when you are, you know, you are safe, you know, let me count it, if your cycle is 28 days, let me quickly say that, that will help you. After your menstruation, maybe you have five cycle, five days menstruation, of course you are safe like that, you count to 14, from the first day of your menstruation, you count to 14 days. So the last, the fifth day of your menstruation, you are safe. You can still have intercourse after your menstruation till um, 11 days. After 11 days, you stop because from 12 to 14 days, sperm can be, can be for three days. Sperm can live in the, in the womb for three days. So because ovulation is between that 14, 15, 16. Okay, so you can have, immediately have your, have your period, you can have sex for the next, maybe six days, and you stop. And after your ovulation, after counting your 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, of course, you enjoy yourself till you see your period again. And it's not bad if you wait for another five, six days to have sex, it's not a big problem. <laughs> you know Thank you, ma. <laughs> Somebody said the salt and so water. No, 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 I just said that now. Mommy, I'm sorry. People are not smiling. No. Somebody said, is the salt and water to be taken orally or to wash vagina? Ah, to Which wash one? vagina. To wash oh. vagina, ma. Generously. You can't take it orally. Ah, that would be too... That's what, they, that's what so. they ask, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have another question. I have another question here. Um, I've seen the hand, I'll call you, but let me ask this question. It says, how can one practice a mastermind presence? Oftentimes, the mind bears off to other things other than the present task. I did a little research with my colleagues, and I discovered that this is prevalent with women. 
So be kind yeah. deed. In most cases, we can't help it. Can they speak to this? We are the ones who want to think of what they will eat at home in the evening. Yeah. If somebody yeah. has done no work, yeah. if mm. somebody has, uh, if your husband is in good shape, if you are the one just, you know, juggling everything together. So how can you mastermind the present? Oh, okay, it's like, um, you know, because this is a uh, Christian gathering, and I don't believe in some other things the uh, traditional Chinese, you know, medicine do, because sometimes they be demonic. In fact, not a big, it's totally demonic. But um, you have to, uh, to practice your present moment is that you focus on what you are doing right now. It's like, you know, sometimes when we are praying, our mind wanders, you bring it back. You have to be in control of your present. You have to control your mind. Like, okay, right now we are having this program. I try not to think of other things. The truth is that many of my clients are buzzing me right now. A lot, but I try to ignore and let me enjoy this. That's just, you know, you, you control it by, okay, you are focused. Okay, I have to quickly give this report to my boss or I have to write this thing down. You are just at the moment. Of course, if your mind wanders, you bring it back. So when you do this over time, you train your mind. It's just like when we are praying, you know, when you are praying, you start thinking about different things. You bring it back. Oh, try to be focused in your prayer, you know. That's the way it works. So when you, you have to train your mind, actually. You have to train your mind. Like I'm here now, we are all here. For that person to even send me a message, shows that you're actually listening to me. You're actually trying to practice the present moment. So you are right here and you try not to get distracted. Even if your mind wanders there, you bring it back. That's the way it works, okay? And really, it's okay, to that's why I actually mentioned it. So we must be in control of our mind. That's Thank right, you man. very much. So um, please, um, host, can you please unmute um, the person using the, okay, so I have two people raising their, their hands. I don't know whether this is a lady is using a phone name Samuel Abayomi. Can you please unmute? Can we have your yes. question quickly? I, 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 good evening. Abayomi on the line. Samuel is a male. It's not a lady. Yes, sir. I thank Reverend for enlightening people on natural health care. But I want to ask a question because a woman came to me last week saying that his son of 40 years old has ED. And what can that boy do? He has gone, he has used all this orthodox medicine, it doesn't work. But I told the woman that the son may have infection, that first he has to treat the infection before we can look at other natural products which the boy can use so that he can correct that ED. Please, I need your advice. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, okay. sir. Thank I, I you really very appreciate much. that. And uh, we welcome you. Thank you, sir, for coming around, sir. Actually, I would advise the person to come and see Reverend on Tuesday. He's always consulting for free on Tuesday in, mm -hmm. in Lagos. Okay? So definitely there's a way out. And um, of course, with prayer. But basically, if the person has done everything orthodox, nothing is working. Nothing Please, we working. need to see, yeah, we need to see the person. Reverend, we need to see, to actually assess and clerk and consult. We do just give medication off or supplement off, offline like that. Let the person come around or even call Reverend and chat. He's always consulting on Tuesdays. Okay, okay. thank you so very much. That would be another way to help the um, person. Okay. Mm. Thank you very much. And well done. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, it's good to have you. Are, are you still home, sir? You still I saw there? another... No, he's gone, I think. Okay, I saw okay. another hand on. Um, um, Buki or Motayo, you are muted. Can you ask a question? Yes, good evening. I Buki thank you so Motayo. very much. Thank, thank you. you so thank, thank you so much for the opportunity. And thank you so much um, uh, for all the um, wonderful suggestions. My question borders on um, using um, a safe period as a form of uh, family planning. And this is my question. So, you know, as women and even as married women, we, we don't want to take spontaneity out of lovemaking, right? So my question is, when we are using this option of, um, you know, safe period and all that natural method, what um, would you suggest that we do, you know, if we just want to make love outside of our safe period? what would you suggest that we do for those that are using that um, 
form okay. of family planning. Yeah. So you yeah, are just you very like, much for you. Know, Yes, thank you very much. And that is true, you know. It may, that thing may just come at, at the heat of the moment, right? I know. And um, I think it's better you use condom at that time. Why not use condom? Because you are not in your safe period and you don't want a baby for now and uh, you just have to do it, yeah, right? Of course. So why not use condom? I think it's better you use condom at that time. Right? If they are doing the, the new condom latte, they are not, they are not using, the, we have organic one that the material they are using is actually almost natural, in fact, pure natural. So you can source for things like that. Why not? Yeah, you use, you use condom. This female condom. They like, they like condom. And the woman should use female condom. Man. At least you help yourself because you are the one carrying the baby. So use, <laughs> use female, uh, the female one to keep yourself safe. <laughs> Any other question? Thank you so much, you, Abby. Okay. I, can't, okay. I can't see anybody raising any hand. Do, you, do we have any other question? If you don't have, we might want to call it um, off at this point in time. Any other question from anybody? I'm just checking the chat box again. Somebody is uh, advocating withdrawal method. I'm not there. Who, if you miscalculate, you are just on your own. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think those are all the questions that we have. Thank you so very much. It's been an enlightening session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Please tell us. Um, I want to join my voice. Laugh. Many people are not laughing, no. Uh, if you know laugh today, we are not closing. No. Uh, thank you. I've seen, I've seen <laughs> Sister Esther could be smiling. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah. Yes, ma. <laughs> yes, ma. Today, I want to say thank you very much. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Yes, Taking your time yesterday and today. Yes, we are really grateful. I'm sure we'll be blessed. If subsequent questions come in, you can be sure that we'll pass it on to you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And pass it on to us. But just in rounding up on you, I want to ask you, which Christian therapist will you recommend? Because from what you said today, we find out that some people will really need counsel. They do. Apart from this talk, you know, they need one on one, either themselves or, you know, we know, you know, some Nigerian men, when you say cancer, they will tell you, I don't have yeah, problem. I do have problem. Yeah, problem. So we don't want to see their pastor. Yeah, hey, so you've gone <laughs> to report me to Pastor Oju, you know, Mama Fi So that's yeah, true. Man. That's the truth. I'm a pastor and I know I, I deal know. with different, different <laughs> issues. You know, and you know, sometimes we need, can you just recommend if we call on you some Christian therapists that people could really talk to? You know, to be sincere, I only know non-Christians, actually. So I, I know about myself and um, I don't want to recommend. The other professionals that I know, they are not Christians. They would, they are not, they, they might, they will just give you, you know, counsel based on, what they think, you know, medically and all that. And, you know, even I've seen some of them even encouraging them to watch pornography, which is wrong. So I won't say I don't know. Say anything. that again, ma. Yes, ma. I said, I actually i have seen some of the sex therapists and all these people tell the couple to go and watch pornography, which is wrong. Yes. We actually very discussed wrong. this very wrong. because, very wrong, because they don't know those people doing that, they are high, they are under, an influence and God did not create us to be spontaneous like that. And you expect your wife to be like that, it cannot happen. And they do such things, you are actually releasing demons. So there should be a balance. So for I don't know, because if you go elsewhere, they will tell you to start doing things when you are when you and your husband try to start watching porn and all that, it will help you. It's a like you rather redeem, redeem, I mean release demons in your house. So. That's the truth. Because whatever you see that woman do there or the man, you cannot do it naturally because that's the way God created us. There's a level you can, there's a level you can go, you know, anatomically. So if you think um, watching that, oh, my wife cannot do the way they are doing there. They are under drugs, they are under an influence. And of course, demons. So I would encourage, because we have done this a lot in church, where, where even some Christians were saying that because somebody told them. 
So it's it is no no. It no, is no no. no. So yeah. I, I don't know anyone for now. I know myself, and probably I know Daddy will be able to encourage too. And uh, mommy, 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 I can't hear me <laughs> on this issue. But I only know myself. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't know any other person that are Christians. No, outside. Okay. Okay. Um, somebody is asking that we're really great. Sorry, sorry, Pastor. So somebody just asked a question that what kind of salt is he ordinary salt or sea salt? If you have both, use anyone. Okay, okay. <laughs> thank and you. Salt. Salt. Yes, to make yeah, it yes, to yes. make it more Please. potent, potent. You can mix use, everything. Use salt. Mix everything, but seriously, I did not recommend. I just, you know, I just said it out of, you know, I said it's a crooked way. I didn't recommend, but I can tell you, if I can point one or two people that are, that are using it up to now, and it's still working over five, six years. Okay, yeah, that's why I said that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. Yes, we yes, do ma. not want to drag this. Yes, ma'am. We thank you. We bless God for your life. We give you all the all the glory for the way he has used you. Thank May you. he continue to strengthen and uphold you in Jesus' name. Keep your family, keep your business, keep your calling and everything in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Once again, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank We're you, grateful. Ma. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for having me, Elder ma. Baba Lola, we say thank yes. you, ma. <laughs> it was ma. really a nice time that we had on the tip. Be the light. Mm. Mommy Baba Lola, thank you very much, very much, very much. And I know that time was, you had time constraint, trying to pour out everything that you want to say. But we can feel you, we can sense it. I'm just going to send some charts, maybe as a addendum to different ways we can be the light, not helping us in everything we do. And we should know that the reason why we're doing this talk on be the light and doing emotional stress is so that you can go out and shine, not just so that you can keep it. So anywhere you are, I'm happy going through the list. I see people from the diaspora everywhere all over the world. Some people joining from Canada, from USA, from Australia, yeah. from UK, from yeah. Nigeria, from some other parts of Africa. I can see you. I can't, because of time, we can't mention you one by one, but we can see you and God knows you and I appreciate all of you for heeding to our call and for joining. God bless you all in Jesus' name. So just Amen. check Amen. your chat box. You will see some addition to be the light that I've posted there. That's addition thing you can do. So I will now hand over to those persons that will do the rounding of. God bless you as you partake with us yesterday and today at the Vienna Conference of the Women of praise of the Shepherd's Flock in International Church. Join us tomorrow if you're free at nine o'clock for our service. But every Monday, please don't forget, we have something we call Expose 8 p.m. Nigerian time. Join Reverend Tony on Expose, he's been on it, is on YouTube. So please kindly log in. And we have a school that calls Raphael the Living Institute. We've done one online in July. We're doing another one in August. If you go to our site on Facebook, Instagram, any social media, YouTube, you will see how to connect there to our Rafa LD Living Institute. Online, Strictly is going to be on Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday morning and Saturday evening, and you graduate. God bless you all. We really appreciate you. We're glad. The Bible says.
Oriwe Meskata. 